Yeah, so just to continue on, the last video was um, talking a bit about Emma Watson's speech at the UN. I'm going to try and continue on with that, but also add some some things I want to say in this video. Um, so, yeah, uh, Emma Watson was talking about why she's a feminist, and I was arguing that she made uh, a lot of fair points. But what she didn't do was really acknowledge why this movement has the image it does, the negative image. Um, most women don't call themselves feminists and nor do most men. And there is a reason for that. Um, when a movement has a bad image, it's no good just complaining about it, you have to really explore the reasons why. And perhaps at this point it would be a good time to introduce uh, something else I saw. This is from a male feminist. Um, and again, he would be someone I would describe as quite moderate, based on the way he's writing. And uh, just bear with me a second while I get this up. I came across this initially about a year ago, actually, um, and it's worth it's worth quoting and it's worth referring to a bit. So you can find this if you Google it. Well, I'll put a link anyway, but um, just bear with me a second. While I'm finding this, I just want to, um, okay, here it is. Five reasons why, duh, 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 my computer's a bit slow this evening. Five reasons why so many people believe feminism hates men and why they're not true. Um, okay, he has a little cartoon and it's like, hi, I'm a feminist. No, I don't hate men. No, I don't think men are evil. No. I don't think all men are rapists. Yes, I want equality for all genders. Yes, I'm a feminist. Um, the person is called... Um, don't say their name, actually. Um, if I find it at the bottom, I'll quote that. But anyway, this is a person who has, I guess you would call it a blog, and he has written about why he's taken on some of the, the stereotypes or the things that are feminism often gets criticised about. Feminism doesn't hate men, so why do so many people think feminism equals man-hating? Let's look at a few explanations for this fallacy. I'm not going to read this in detail because it's just going to take too long, but I will put a link so you can see for yourself. 1. Because some individual feminists hate men. Surprised to hear me say that? It's true. There's no point in avoiding it, so we may as well start with it. Just look around the internet. Um, in 30 seconds on Google, I find this article, first page of my first search about radical feminism, and this delightful collection of quotes comes up. Um, here's one from Valerie Salanis. To call a man an animal is to flatter him. He's a machine, a walking dildo. Um, but there's a difference between feminists and misandrists. I would question that, actually. Um, I believe there's many feminists who are misandrists. Um, and I want to get back to that point actually well, no you know what I'll, I'll take this point by point okay so he's saying that it's not fair to judge a whole movement by a few individuals fair point the problem is moderate feminists like him don't do nearly enough to take on the extremists and this is the point I made in the last video maybe moderate feminists get annoyed when they get compared to the likes of Valerie Solanas and I've always said I believe I've made this point in previous videos I think the MRA movement is wrong um, and other anti-feminists are wrong to say that all feminists hate men. That is clearly not the case. Um, I've been in debates with feminists where they say, look, we've got brothers, we've got husbands, we've got sons, we don't hate men. And I believe that. I don't believe that every feminist hates men. Um, the problem is, there is a very vocal minority who do. And extended from on to that is that the moderates really, really don't keep them in check. They rarely challenge them. All they do is distance themselves from them. So if you really think that these people are a problem with their new movement, then you need to not only distance yourself, you need to be actively denouncing them, shaming them, saying, we don't want anything to do with you. Shame on you for stirring up hatred against men. But they don't do that. They just say, oh, that we're not the same people. That's It's a bit like, to me... Um, ordinary Muslims who try to 
So what is the um, is the mystery nothing to do with Islam? Not to go off on a tangent, but it's the same principle. If you have extremists within um, within a wide body of people, within a group, within a movement, then the extremists have to be isolated and they have to be um, scrutinised because it's a lot easier for people within the group to do it than it is for people outside. So, for example, myself as a non-feminist, I could just say, "Oh, they're extremists." But it would be a lot more poignant for a feminist to say that and actually say, uh, not only say they're extremists, but actually forcefully condemn their behaviour and they haven't done it. Um, the second point he makes, because people have been told feminists hate men for about 200 years, so what he's basically saying there is that um, ever since modern feminism has existed, it's, it that has been an accusation. Yeah, but there's a reason for that. Because, you know, this, this accusation wasn't just some sort of conspiracy fear. It wasn't just brought out of nowhere. There was a basis for it. Because so often in feminism's history, it has been fundamentally anti-male. That's indisputable. Three, because most men aren't bad but think feminism says they are. Um, being a feminist doesn't mean you believe all men are rapists. Uh, this quote comes from a book by Marilyn French and it seems to be recited more by anti-feminists than feminists themselves um, but the point there is that uh, feminism by nature divides people so granted the vast majority of feminists probably don't stand up and say I hate men and further to that probably most of them don't hate men but the movement does isolate men. It does turn women against men. Take, for example, the advocacy of women's studies. Now, that is unquestionably divisive. Uh, an academic study that is devoted only to one gender, which promotes a victimhood mentality, and which, by extension, demonizes the other gender. Feminists not only support women's studies, they actively encourage them. And woe behold if anyone dared suggest there be men's studies. Um, the other thing about that is that feminism puts men and women apart as all men are oppressors, all women are um, oppressed. And to add to this point, when women do something bad, when you do have an unsavoury woman, for example, if you have a situation where a woman commits a crime, why is it um, that the feminist movement is hell-bent on obsessing over women in jail? If this movement really believes in equality, then they would recognise that if a woman commits crime, she should serve exactly the same sentence as a man. No more, no less. They'd love to talk about um, wage equality. Okay, so what about some equal responsibility? And I'll get on to that um, Gradually. Next point. Because some feminists aren't willing to address men's issues, though some are, he has in brackets. Uh, I would I would amend that most feminists aren't willing to address men's issues. Vast majority of feminists, I would say, are not willing to address men's issues. I wouldn't say all. To be fair, like I said, Emma Watson did address some of those issues. Um, maybe only because she realised she was speaking in front of a large international audience, she had to, uh, or maybe she genuinely does care, I don't know, I'm not going to assume to read her mind, but I would automatically question that, because some feminists aren't willing to address men's issues, no, because most feminists aren't willing to address men's issues. Why do I say that? Because if they were, they wouldn't actively stand in the way of men's issues, and that's just the point, feminists do. Take for example New Labour, Labour, whatever. The Labour Party, the feminists within the Labour Party, don't give a damn about men's issues. Why do I say that? Because it's never brought up at party conferences. They have women-only conferences, and yet men's issues are completely ignored. This is a fact. When do you ever see anyone stand up at a Labour Party conference and say, then this is significant, because as Britain's largest opposition party, they could form the next government, so it is significant. Um, it's not about um, some feminists don't address men's issues most feminists don't and as a movement by and large it doesn't 
granted there are individual feminists who will acknowledge that there are issues um, that men uh, suffer from but even the Emma Watson speech even in that the campaign is called he for she now surely if it was about equality there would be two um, campaigns complementing one another he for she she for he that would be a wonderful idea okay so encourage men to stand up for women's rights but also encourage women to stand up for issues that impact men and there's no such campaign at least certainly not organized by feminists five because sensationalism is a good way to distract from real issues well there he's basically saying that it's all made up that it's a conspiracy theory that um, the negative connotations feminism has is, uh, is undeserved um, well that is just not the case because the negative connotations feminism has like I say in my view it's entirely brought on itself if moderate feminists don't want their movement to have a bad image they should be a lot more forceful in taking on the misandrous within their midst now like I say probably most feminists don't hate men but as a movement I believe at its core it is deeply deeply divisive and any movement that is divisive by nature has to be treated with caution I mean feminists will say uh, we haven't come, um, we've come a long way but there's still a lot of issues to address in terms of women's rights that might be true but there's still a lot of areas where men are suffering and feminism as a movement doesn't care individual feminists might care as a movement it absolutely doesn't um, another point I would make though uh, and I'll put a link to that um, Another point I would make is there is a lot of focus in the feminist movement about equality, equality, equality. This is their magic word. But one thing they never seem to talk about is equal responsibility. So, for example, they talk about the uh, difference in the wage, in wages, the wage gap. It's an important issue, and it, I agree it's something that needs to be discussed. But by the same token, you could talk about the vast majority of high-risk jobs... Uh, for example, oil rig workers, construction workers and so on, the vast majority of those jobs are occupied by men. So why is that not discussed? Um, I mean, it's you cannot claim that a movement is about equality if it abjectly refuses to even allow dissent. And that's another thing about feminism within itself. It's actually a very, very, very narrow movement. It does not tolerate dissent. And I actually was going to get on to the point, and I sort of went off on a tangent. But I've come across quite a number of women who have said they they did describe themselves as feminists, but then they left the movement when they found that it was basic. It's a bit like joining a political party, and you have to nail your colours to the mass. You slavishly agree with everything, or or that's you know it's a very isolating sort of uh, mentality because some of the harshest critics of feminism are actually women and some of the harshest critics of other women are feminists so this is not a unifying movement at all I think the reason it's it's pretty obvious why men don't subscribe to the movement because it constantly makes them feel guilty because it constantly scapegoats them because it blames men for adult women's decisions again something that Miss Watson didn't bring up but it's this thing about responsibility um, feminism has never really addressed that for example if a woman commits a crime why the hell should she get a more lenient sentence than a man if feminists really believe in equality they shouldn't just be saying oh we're campaigning for women to have equal rights with the gender gap but they should be saying but by the way we are also saying that if you're a woman and you commit a crime guess what you're going to go to prison just like a man would when do you ever hear a feminist say that? Never. Never. So, to me, this is the biggest single flaw with feminism, perhaps. It's the fundamental dishonesty that it is only about equality. Because when you really scrutinise this movement, when you really look at all the sources available, or as many as you can, you'll see that it is actually all about victimhood, it's all about scapegoating men for everything and it's all about 
pushing for equality but not equal responsibility and that is fundamentally why it is flawed and I think I'll make one final video just to conclude.